This is our top five motorcycles of 2020 that we have reviewed. Now in at number five is the Honda Goldwing. Um, it's only at number five, it would have gone higher if it weren't for the fact that the Honda is clad in plastic, um, which is really unfortunate because it's an incredible bike underneath. Um, it's incredible on the motorway, on the freeway, on the dual carriageways. It will go on forever, so it's a perfect touring bike for long distances. It handles beautifully. Uh, the engine is phenomenal. It's got tons of power and tons of torque. Um, it's a, an incredible motorcycle, but it's just a shame that it's clad in all that plastic panelling. So uh, if they could redesign that bike and make it look more retro, more cool, my goodness me, it would be a fantastic motorcycle. Now the Honda Goldwing to me is like a car, um, it's very precise and it's sort of what you'd think as a German car, like a Porsche, it sounds like one, it's got a six cylinder engine, a double clutch gearbox, if you opt for that, and um, it's sort of like the Porsche Panamera of motorbikes. So make sure you check out our review of the Honda Goldwing, we're putting all the links to all our top five bikes below in the description. And while we're at it, please subscribe. It's free, it costs you absolutely nothing. It really helps us. And the more subscribers we have, the more interesting bikes we can get hold of, and sooner rather than later. So number four is the Husqvarna 701 Enduro LR. Um, this is a really, really good bike. It's good on the road, and it's also very good off-road. perfectly quick enough on the road, you've got the quick shifter so you can go up the gears very quickly um, and off-road it's almost as good as a hardcore enduro bike which you can't say um, for the adventure bikes that are out there um, they're normally rubbish off-road, they're too heavy they'll fall over and then you can't pick them back up again um, which this is not a problem with the Husqvarna The 701 was one of the most fun bikes I've ridden all year, I mean it really was fun and um, it was a shame to sort of give it back. And interestingly, immediately before we test rode the um, Husqvarna, I was riding the KTM 790 adventure bike, which is also a very good motorcycle. And as far as adventure bikes go, it's a good one. I'm not really keen on adventure bikes, um, but the KTM is a good one. But we went down the same track, and the first thing that happened, I nearly tipped up with it. So uh, when we came down the same track uh, an hour or two later with the Husqvarna, it handled it without any problem whatsoever. So its off-road ability is second to none, but as Darcy said, better than all the uh, adventure bikes. But with that long range tank, you can go on long adventures. So it's a phenomenal bike and definitely check out that review. Now, there's no sports bikes in our lineup this year. Um, we haven't really ridden many sports bikes and most of them are quite small. So for someone who's over six foot, they're not really designed for you. Um, it doesn't mean they're bad bikes. You can see the reviews of them and see our opinions of them. They're just not in our top five because they're not um, in our personal top five. In at number three is the Indian Springfield Dark Horse. Now, I was blown away by that bike. What a motorcycle. Um, the engine is fantastic. The gears are fantastic. It's just so stable. I mean, it's a wonderful bike to ride. Uh, it looks the business and it's very impressive. So um, what an incredible motorcycle that Indian really is. Um, so it's firmly at number three. And to be honest with you, two, three and four are kind of interchangeable because they're all so good. It's uh, like splitting hairs. Um, I could have chosen any one to be in its place, but the Indian just pipped it and uh, pipped the Husqvarna and I can't fault it. I really can't. Um, the first thing I noticed about the um the Springfield is how nice it looks. It really does look amazing. Um, and it's very good for tall riders. So if you are over six foot, six foot five even, you'd be fine on the engine.
the only reason the Springfield isn't higher up um, is actually down to the rake. The angle of the forks is very steep. And although it didn't affect the handling, and I was surprised that it didn't, um, I do prefer those sort of bikes to have the forks a little bit more raked out, as they say. Um, so if it had that, it would have perhaps got to number two or even number one. Who knows? But wait and see what number one is. But next up is... At number two is the Harley Davidson Breakout. Um, this is a really, really nice bike. Um, for a long time, I preferred the previous breakout to the new one, um, but that's not the case anymore. I much prefer the new one. It's a better bike in all aspects. It's much better engine, much better handling than the previous model. Um, but I believe they have discontinued it, which is a massive shame because it's a beautiful bike, but um, maybe the sales didn't reflect that. Um, but um, that is a shame they've stopped producing that bike. Now, what I like about the breakout is it's so cool looking. You've got this enormous rear tyre, you've got the fork sticking out like that, it's ever so long, it sounds beautiful, you've got the usual Harley V2 engine, and it's a work of art. Um, the whole bike is just super cool. And if you turn up somewhere on a breaker, everyone's going to turn their heads and say, wow, look at that motorcycle, it's fantastic. And with a little bit of customization, I mean, I would change the pipes to make some louder pipes, you've got one hell of a motorcycle. And as Darcy said, it's a terrible shame that they've uh, axed it and Harley Davidson have done a few stupid things really. They've brought out um, the Harley Davidson soft tail standard. Now imagine if you were saying to your pals at a pub or a bar or whatever and they're talking about bike, what bike have you got? I've got a breakout. What bike have you got? Oh, I've got a fat boy. What bike have you got? Oh, I've got a standard. It just doesn't go. And the soft tail standard is a beautiful bike. And what Harley should have done is say this is the street bob and you can choose the option to have the Street Bob Crew. Um, then it's a different bike because it's they've sort of sold it as a uh, bike to be customised as a blank canvas. But it's more than a blank canvas. It's actually a very nice looking bike. In fact, I think it looks better than the Street Bob, um, which is a shame. But we're talking about a breakout. So the breakout is one of Harley Davidson's success stories, which they've axed. So crazy, but there we are. Number two, the breakout. Going on a bit of a tangent there. I know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> actually like the handling of the breakout. Um, it's sort of got a, a lazy way of steering if you like, but it actually steers quite nicely. And the good thing about long wheel based bikes with raked out forks is that they're even as stable in the corners. So uh, it corners actually very nicely. It's only at very slow speeds when you're manoeuvring that uh, the turning circle isn't very tight. Um, but I would rather that than a sports bike with steep forks that uh, if you sneeze you do a U-turn. So I can't bear that. So the breakout is actually a very nice handling motorcycle. Now in at number one is the BMW R18, which you probably, a lot of you could have guessed. Uh, but it's a bit of a controversial bike. Um, I think a lot of Harley lovers um, hate it because it's a BMW, uh, not because it's a bad bike. Um, maybe they haven't ridden it, or maybe they have. Um, a lot of people are against the mid controls. Personally, I prefer mid controls, but I understand why people like forward controls, um, it just doesn't suit me at all, um, but I'm quite a young person so I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, but I think the bike's got a lot of character, it's a very good looking bike and it's definitely worthy of the number one spot. Now understanding the BMW R18, it's like the same as understanding why you would have organic food or uh, understanding vintage fine wines and why they're better than a £2.50 bottle from the supermarket. Um, or it's like um, knowing the difference between a lipid on a horse and your average cob. Um, it's a very refined um, experience riding the R18 and it's got a huge amount of soul and character and nothing on that bike is done by accident. It's everything on it is deliberate and it's one incredible motorcycle. So we will be doing a follow-up review of the BMW R18. Um, we meant to do one this month, um, but we couldn't get hold of one. Um, so we don't really know when we're going to get hold of one. Um, but it will be coming, it will be in much more depth. 
Um, we'll also have the R18 Classic when it comes out next year. We'll do a proper review of that as well. Um, but yeah, we think we think it's one of the best bikes out there, especially in the cruiser section. Um, having a reverse um, gear, well, it's not gear, but the reverse function is very, very important. Um, and I think the styling of the bike is incredible. A lot of people think the concept looks better than the actual bike. Um, I still think the um, final product is a very good looking bike. Um, and people complain about the exhaust, but who keeps the standard exhaust on a Harley, for example? You just don't. If you do, you're crazy. Um, so that can be changed. There will be lots of exhaust coming out for it. It's a new bike, so there's not many options now. But um, it's the same when the new Harleys come out, there's no exhaust and then suddenly there's hundreds to choose from. So I don't think that's really a problem. Now the geometry of the R18, I would go as far as saying is perfect for a cruiser motorcycle. You've got a very long wheelbase, which is good for stability, and it's also good aesthetically for taller people because um, we've always said it, little short bikes look really stupid if you're tall, uh, even if the seat's high, because they just don't look right. Well, the R18 is beautifully long. You've got the forks at 37.2, or is it 32? 32.7 degree brake angle and a long trail. So the dimensions give you an incredibly stable, beautiful handling motorcycle. The best handling cruiser out there, I would say. Um, I did say in our review of it that um, I thought the Harley Davidson Heritage Classics perhaps handles a little better, um, but I was in the, referring more to sort of the way it hits the bumps because it's not quite as heavy as the R18. And if you hit a pothole on the R18, you do feel it a bit. It doesn't unsettle the bike, um, but that's splitting hairs. But um, no, what an incredible handling motorcycle it is. Did you notice the peg scraping? Because a lot of people have said that about that. Um, I didn't. I don't think I was riding that slowly, actually. Um, and it, perhaps it's the way some people ride. I think sports bike riders kind of chuck the bike into a corner and it kind of hits down. Um, if you lean it properly and you ride like a, a cruiser is supposed to, I didn't sp uh, scrape the pegs. And I, I'm, I'm sure I could if I really pushed it in the corners. Um, but it's, you know, you have to ride the bike you've got uh, the way the bike you've got should be ridden. It's like, um, you know, it, it, I wouldn't expect it to do motocross. Um, and, you, you know, you couldn't complain about the suspension if you were going over bumps all the time because it's not a sort of bike. So it's the same sort of thing. You know. yeah, it is what it is. It's a cruiser and you ride it like a cruiser. We almost put the Honda CB1100 RS in our top five. And the only reason we didn't was because it's a little bit short for the taller rider, but it is a really, really nice bike and we did enjoy it very much. Um, so unfortunately it didn't quite make a top five for that reason. Um, but if you let us know what you think of our video, um, what would you put in the top five out of the bikes that we've reviewed this year? Um, it's not out of any bikes because we haven't ridden all the bikes in the world. Um, let us know below, leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't done already and check out our t-shirt store, there's a carousel below, um, it displays about 10 of them in there but if you actually go to the website there's a lot more on there so don't forget to check that out.